Allah saying, فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَكَدْ فَاسِ Success, whoever can save himself from the eternal punishment, punishment that will not come to an end, but will increase by the second, pain beyond the comprehension of the human mind. Whoever can save himself from that Jahannam and he's admitted under, into gardens under which rivers flow, he is the one that has succeeded. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورُ My young friend, do not be deceived by that BMW that you may drive. Do not be deceived by that Jaguar or the fat Ranger Rover that you may have. Do not be deceived by the bungalows that you may live in. Tall, lofty buildings, beautiful houses, the beautiful clothes that you may wear. Do not be deceived by this dunya. Why? وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورُ This dunya is deceiving. Why? Because everything with this dunya will come to an end and this dunya will also come to an end. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ There is only one thing to remain and that is none other than the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, the creator of the dunya. Other than this, every single thing will perish. Say, O Muhammad, قُلْ Tell these people, إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ You know this death, this death that you're running away from. And you and I at this moment in time are running away from death. We really don't believe it. You know, we might not say with our mouths that we don't believe in death. We may acknowledge it, yeah, because we've seen people go before us. So we may say we believe, but our actions are a proof that we don't believe. You see the massage is full on a Friday, you see the massage is full today, you see the massage is full on the day of Eid. But the rest of the year, my young friend, tomorrow from Fajr Salah, you will see one or two subs inside this masjid. And the same goes around for every other masjid in this country. When it's time for Salah, we become deaf and blind to the teachings of Allah and His Rasul. When it's time for Zakah, we become deaf and blind to the teachings of Allah and His Rasul. When it's time for Hajj, we become deaf and blind to the teachings of Allah and His Rasul. Our A'mal are saying that we don't believe in death. We're running away from death. Allah is saying, you tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can run wherever you like. You can go in the depths of the Atlantic, in the total darkness. My friend, you can climb the peak of the Everest. My friend, you can hide in the darkness of the Amazon or the Kalahari bush. When your time comes to an end, wherever you are, they say the Pentagon and Fort Knox are places where no one can penetrate and get through. You can go and hide there. When your time comes to an end, all of a sudden, the barrier will be removed from your eyes. You're in the dunya, but now you can see the akhirah and you will see that angel standing before you wherever you are in any corner of the globe. You cannot escape. You could be Bill Gates and you can possess billion and billions of dollars. My friend, you can take the virgin spaceship and go to space. You can try what you like. When your time comes to an end, believe or not believe, you will see the angel standing before you. He will get you. Then, ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ آلِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ آلِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ Every one of us, we will return to the knower of the seen and the unseen. Every one of us will return to the absolute master. You know, at this moment in time, you may do wrong. You know what? You want to do wrong? You can do wrong. Your mother and father won't find out. 
you probably go all the way to the nightclubs in Luton, making sure that none of your mother or father or any one of your relatives have a clue to what you do. But you know what? He is watching every single thing that you do and every word that your tongue utters, he knows of it and he will inform you of every single thing that you've done. He will inform you of every single thing. The angels recording your deeds, my young friend. You can't hide and you will not get away. The angels recording your deeds, they will inform him of what you did. And you want to try denying? Then my friend, the very earth on which you wronged him, the earth on which you stole, the earth on which you fornicated, the earth on which you lied, the earth on which you went to the nightclub, that earth will begin to say, Oh Allah, Abdullah was here on the 29th of December at 10.30. Oh Allah, I saw him, he was here. And if you still try to deny, then my young friends, you know, you say that these body parts are yours. They belong to you. These hands belong to you. This tongue which is speaking at this moment in time, that belongs to you. You know, uh, these legs belong to you. But on that day, my young friend, you will realize that you don't even have control over the th over your own tongue. You have no control over your own hands. You will have no control over your own feet. My friend, even they will not be loyal to you. But on that day, when you stand before the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, you're saying to Allah, Oh Allah, no, I did not do this wrong. Oh Allah, no, I didn't commit this sin. You know your hands, they will begin to speak and say, Oh Allah, no, he's lying. He committed this sin. Your feet will begin to speak and your feet will begin to say, No Allah, he did commit this sin. You're trying to say something with your tongue, but you will find that you have no control over your own tongue and your tongue will bear witness against you and say, Oh Allah, indeed Abdullah committed this sin and I'm a witness to this. Ukukul walidain, disrespecting mother and father. Today all mothers and fathers are crying. That they don't even have control over children as young as five. You know, as young as five, they will turn around and look up at their mothers and fathers and say, hey, who are you to tell me to do this? Who are you? They will answer back the hadith which Hafiz al-Munzri has related in Targhib wa on the authority of Awan ibn Hushim comes to mind. He says, I went to a tribe, there was a tomb near this tribe. And after Asr, this grave opened. And he says, a man came out of this grave. His head was that of a donkey and his body was that of a human being. He came out of the grave. He he hoed three times like a donkey. Three times he he hoed like a donkey. And after this, he went back inside the grave and the grave closed. He says, I asked the locals with regards to this individual as to who he was and why Allah was punishing him in this manner. So he says that the locals informed me that this young individual, he would take alcohol, he would drink, he had the habit of drinking. And when he would drink too much and he would return home in the evening to his mother, just as our mothers do, you know, when we're out and having a good night out, haven't told our mothers, our mothers are sleepless, they're not even sleeping, they're waiting us for inside their homes, you know, uh, fearing uh, with regards to our well-being, are we okay, where are we? They're waiting there, my friends, his mother would do the same. When he would return and she would see him intoxicated to save him from Jahannam and the fire of hell and the punishment of the Akhirah, she would give her son Nasiha and she would say to her son, Oh my son, ittakullah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stay from, stay well away from this thing. al khamru Jumail Ithm. This is the mother of all evils, Ummul Khabayt. Oh my son, Rizsu min Amali Shaitan is a filthy thing, it's from the handicraft and works of the Shaitan. Oh my son, if you want success, if you want to go to paradise, then don't even go near this. Oh my son, do you not realize this 
أو الشيطان through this يريد أن يصدق عن من ذكر الله وعن الصلاة that the شيطان through this wants to stop you from the ذكر of Allah and wants to stop you from prayer. When she would give her son to see it in this manner, you know what he would do? He would turn round to his son and a mom and say, "Oh, mom, stop he hoing like a donkey." He would say to his mom, "Stop he hoing like a donkey." You know what? The exact same thing happens today. The exact same thing happens today. This particular individual used these words. My friends, we use words which are rife in this day and age, which are no different to the words that he used. What do youngsters turn around to their mother and father when their mother and father are saving them from Jahannam and the fire of hell and they're giving them nasiha? What do their sons turn around to their mother and father and say, Oh mother, get off my butt. Give, you're always breathing down upon me. You don't, give me you, know, you don't give me a chance to breathe. You're always coming on top of me. Give me chance to breathe. Give me my own space. Give me my freedom. Stay out of my life. This is what the youngsters utter today. My friends, there is no difference between this and what that individual uttered at that time. Those words were right at that time. These words arrive at this time. Remember, after Asr, that young individual died. And after Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him in such a manner that his head is turned into a donkey. He is the one that comes out of the grave and he holds like a donkey. This hadith was related in front of a master of a hadith. Not one single master rejected or questioned it. This is why I say, my young friends, you know, if you want to believe, then you believe. If you don't want to believe, if you don't want to believe in Allah and His Rasul, if you don't want to believe in the Akhirah, then my friends, the choice is yours. Don't believe. Allah says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Nobody will be forced to declare the kalima La ilaha illallah, La ikraha fi din. Nobody will be forced to accept, embrace Islam and accept the kalima La ilaha illallah. You want to believe? You believe. You don't want to believe? Don't believe. You want to reject Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then my friend, you reject Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to give preference? to the dunya over the akhirah and you want to enjoy this life you know the 50 years that you might get the 60 years that you might get and if you're lucky you get a hundred years you want to enjoy this and you want to give this preference to the eternal bliss in paradise then my friend it's your choice you do this you want to live a life whining and dining you want to live a life pubbing and clubbing you want to live a life chilling and thrilling then my friend you do this well, let me tell you, you know what? The last laugh will be with none other than the Lord of the Arshan Kursi. The last laugh will be with none other than the Lord of the Arshan Kursi. Because Rasulullah Wasallam said, You do as you please, but remember, tamutuna kama tahyon, wa tuhshiruna kama tamutun. You will die just like you lived. You will die just like you lived. And you will be resurrected on the day of judgment, just like you died. Kullu abdin yub'ath ala ma mata alayh. You will die just like you lived. You know, if you've lived whining and dining, chilling and thrilling, and giving preference to the dunya over the akhirah, and then you think in your little mind that on the point of death, you will utter the kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, or you will die reciting dhikr, or sending salutations on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or you will die in the state of prostration, then my friend, people like you and me are living in cuckoo land. We're living in cuckoo land. If we believe that we reject Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we're going to die with the kalima la ilaha illallah. Then we're kidding none other than ourselves. Just as it is hoped that one who pleases Allah and his Rasul and suppresses his desires and gives preference to the akhirah over the dunya, Allah will honor him at the time of death. It's so possible that Allah takes out his soul when he's in the state of prostration, when he's bowing down before the Lord of the Arshan Kursi in prayer. Oh Allah takes out his soul when he's woken up during the night and his hands are raised before his master and he's begging for Allah's mercy. Oh my friends, Allah takes his soul while he's sitting in the masjid 
Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the Rawda offering salams to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or he's in the Masjid al-Haram in the stair of a haram making tawaf around the house of Allah just as it is hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor that individual who gives preference to the Akhirah over the dunya it is feared one who gives preference to the dunya over the Akhirah and rejects the teachings of Allah and his Rasul and neglects his obligation to Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my friends it is feared that Allah will disgrace him at the time of death Allah will disgrace him at the time of death. And if Allah disgraces him at the time of death, then you tell me what do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for him thereafter in the grave, day of judgment and Jahannam.